Hey everyone, it's Jeff from Programmer vs. World, and you're watching the very first video in our tutorial series on OSGI. In this video, we're going to download and install Apache Felix and get it ready for future tutorials that we're going to do. But before we can really get started with that, we need to verify the job is installed and working properly on our machine. We can do that by pulling up a terminal and simply typing the Java command to validate that it actually is there and in the path. And we need it to be in the path because that's the way we're going to start Apache Felix or we can actually check and see what version we're running. In this case, you'll see that we're running version 1.7 and that'll be perfectly fine for our Apache Felix distribution. So now that we've validated that Java's working correctly, let's go ahead and go to Apache Felix's website and download uh, the framework that we're going to use for the tutorials. If we go to uh, felix.apache.org, and, note, and click on the download section on the left hand side, you'll see the Felix framework distribution hanging out right about in the middle of the page. Now you have your options here. You can use a tar G zip or you can just grab a regular zip. In our case, we're gonna use the zip. And it's easier for both Windows and Mac users to use the zip file. After it's downloaded, um, unfortunately on a Mac, it automatically unzips it for us, which it's right here. All you need to do is unzip it and then move it into a place where you can uh, get access to it frequently. In our case, we've created a tutorial section for it right here under Apache Felix. You'll notice that inside the Felix framework folder, there's a bin folder with only a single jar in it. This is the jar that we're going to run to start up Apache Felix. And uh, we'll be using a terminal for the remainder of this tutorial anyway. So let's go back to our terminal. And let's go into that directory where we installed Apache Felix. In our case, it's actually under Documents, Tutorials, um, Apache Felix, Felix. And if we look in there, we can see the original bin directory. This is as far as we really need to go to run Apache Felix. And it's probably preferable that you stay in this directory. I know it's a little off, but basically type java.jar and in our bin directory, we'll target that specific jar. It's a runnable jar. So when we hit return, we'll be immediately uh, presented with a prompt. Now this prompt by itself is like the shell for Apache Felix. You'll notice it says go, 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 go is actually the name of the shell. So the first command we normally would type in here is help. And you'll see that there's a whole bunch of a uh, listing of commands basically that are, that are available inside the go, go shell. Uh, the ones that are here are prefixed with Felix. You don't have to write exactly this way. This is almost a namespace and a command the way this is bundled together. So this is the namespace of Felix and the command bundle level. Whenever you see a namespace of Felix uh, and you're in the Felix shell, you don't have to type the preface part of it. For instance, I noticed the LB command was right about here. So LB command lists all the bundles that are installed in the system. So we can type LB to get a list of all those bundles. We don't have to type Felix LB to do the same thing. Help is a very valuable resource in the fact that uh, there's a limited command set inside the terminal to begin with, and it's really easy to get help on a specific command inside of here. For instance, the install command is the one we'll be using next. So let's get help on the install command. And as you can see, the install command is very simple. It just takes parameters, which can be any number of target URLs specified after the command. So that means we can actually install bundles from URLs or file system uh, URIs. In our case, we're going to use URLs. But before we get started on that, we need to go back to Apache Felix's website and take a look at where some of these URLs may actually be. So in order to get the bundles that or at least the URLs to the bundles that we need to install into Apache Felix. We need to go back to Felix's website, which we still still have pulled up over here. Uh, underneath the distribution link where we originally downloaded uh, Felix from, you'll notice there's a sub projects section underneath here. Inside the sub projects, you'll notice that there's links to uh, uh, specific jar files and zipped up copies of the source. We're not going to care so much about the source. It's the actual links to these jar files that we care about. Now we're going to need to download a few of these in order to get our web console running. And uh, 
right off the bat, we need two of the admin modules installed before the console will run. They'll help us manage the configuration of Felix and they'll help us manage the events of Felix. So we're going to need the event admin and the configuration admin, but let's do the event admin first because I already know of a catch 22 that comes up for the config and I want to show you that. So if life was simple, all we would really have to do is click on the jar binary, say copy link, go into Apache Felix, let's list our bundles one more time. Okay. And install that by pasting that link inside of the actual GoGo -Go shell. If you notice, we're given a bundle ID as a response right after the install. And if we list our bundles again, we'll notice that now there's a new bundle five called event admin that's just sitting there in the installed state, but it's not active like all the others. In order to turn it active, we need to type the start command and use that specific bundle identifier 5, which is over on the left hand side, to start the, the uh, bundle up. If we go in now, we'll notice that it's active. So we're going to need to do this for about four or five more bundles. So let's keep going and, and I'll show you some other catch 22s that happen when you're first starting this up. I previously had a written tutorial on how to do this and what would end up happening to people all the time is they would end up uh, coming in here, right click. We're gonna do config admin next, by the way. So right click on the config admin jar, say copy link. Yours may not do what mine's about to do, but be aware that this could happen to you, right? You go to type install, you put the name of the jar in and you get a file not found exception. These mirrors inside Apache are usually well maintained, but there are typos from time to time in terms of the actual links to the file. So if we click on this file, like we're going to download it, we'll, we'll get this message that a config admin-1.8.2 was not found on the server. If we go to the URL bar and we actually just take the name of the jar file out, we can get a listing of everything that's in that FTP. And if we scroll down just a little bit, We'll notice that it's because it's not 182 anymore, it's actually 184 and the link never got updated on the main site. Now, each time you go to this uh, location, you'll notice it's a complete, it could be a completely different mirror that you actually get. In our, site, in our, our case, we're getting Columbia's mirror, Columbia University. In different mirrors, different links may or may not work. I know it's a nuisance, but um, it's something that you have to work through just to get your initial one started. Once you do, you can actually copy the entire Felix directory and have like a cookie cutter stamp of um, a specific installation that you want to use. If you right click on this file and say copy link, you can do the same thing that we originally did to install it into Apache Felix and it'll work just fine. Notice we got a bundle ID this time of seven. If we list our bundles, you'll see it there. If we start bundle seven, we're good to go. So with those two event services or event and admin service installed into the console, we can now start to put some of the meat and potatoes inside here. Another thing you're going to have to work through if you ever do this um, frequently is you're going to have to work through dependency problems. It is highly probable <laughs> since this is a module based development platform that something you install is going to have a dependency on another. So let's deliberately cause this. So I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, a, a web server. In our case, I'm going to grab Jetty. And I'm going to take that link. And I'm going to paste it into an install. It'll be installed as bundle number eight. But you'll notice if I go to start bundle number eight, I'm immediately going to get this really bizarre error message that says it's unable to resolve um, javax.servlet. You'll notice it's kind of hanging out right around in here. And that's because, of course, the web server depends on these other APIs. And one of the most important ones for a web server is the servlet API. And I didn't install it into the container. So if I come in here and look, I can actually see that both the servlet and uh, both the 2.6 and 3.0 API for servlet is actually available. I can come in here and install it now. Do the same thing. APIs should start relatively easily since they're just more skeletons. Now, if I go to start it, I should get a completely different error message. In this case, it's telling me I have no HTTP API installed. And that would be fair enough. We haven't. It's sitting right here and we haven't, we haven't installed it either. So let's go ahead and install it. Now I have the HTTP API installed. And let's try to start it again. Oh, it started this time. So now if we actually open up a brand new tab and we go to localhost 8080, 
we get a web server response of a 404, and that's actually a good thing. That means our web server is running. So now all we need to do is come down to the very bottom and find the web console all in one bundle. Uh, this just manages and puts all these dependencies in for you rather than us having to click on them one at a time to get them installed, which we really don't want to do. It's too time consuming. We can actually go ahead and copy the link to that bundle, come back in here, paste it in. We should be able to start that with no problems as well. And I lied to you. Oh, that's because that wasn't the all-in-one bundle. If you read it, you'll notice that it says the Web Management Console 428 is what it actually installed, and that's incorrect. Yeah, so we need to get rid of that bundle um, and try this again. So we'll get to use the uninstall command, which is easy enough. You just type uninstall in the name of the bundle again. This time if we list, it's gone, which is a good thing. Now, where did we mess up? All-in-one bundle. Oh, I can see right here. See where I clicked on the web console jar and not the all-in-one bundle. Well, it's an easy enough mistake to remedy. Now we'll come back in and paste that one in. That's a good reason why you want the all-in-one bundle. It's because without it, you can get dependency problems that way. Now, we didn't see anything magical happen there in our console, but what did happen was, in, if we go to localhost 8080, where we originally went before, I'm sorry if I didn't tell you the port. I don't think I did. And we go to system console, now we'll notice uh, that we're presented with, you'll be presented with a login screen. Let me simulate that. For some reason that, you'll be presented with this login screen when you first arrive. The username and password is admin, admin. But when you get inside, you actually get an HTTP view, basically, of what we're looking at here. And this is a lot easier to understand. You'll also notice that the ability to install and update bundles now has a button over here where you can actually just choose a file off your local machine and install from there. And we're going to use that a lot in our tutorials, at least until we have Maven up and running automating this for us. Thanks for joining this original tutorial series. Feel free to browse around this web console and play with it. If you need to go back to Apache Felix and you want to install some other things, I would highly recommend uh, going in and finding some of these other services like Log or uh, any of the admin services that uh, are, they don't really have that many dependencies and go ahead and use them and install them into the web console and see how it works. Um, I'm Jeff and from Programmer vs. World, this has been uh, the first steps with Apache Felix. You guys have a good one.